The City of Bristol, providing beautiful parks, economic development, and a family-friendly community. It's uh, 6.54, and we're going to call the uh, joint meeting to order at 6.54 and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And since we have some uh, newer people second meeting, I would just like to ask Mark to reintroduce himself very quickly to this group as well. He's a new member of the Board of Finance, so some of the new people have not met him yet. Hello, I'm Mark Whitford. Uh, I live in Empire Way. Um, been in Bristol so far my whole life, as uh, you mentioned that. Up into including today. <laughs> I'm going forward. I'm an actuary by nature. Um, I Grew up, uh, I went to UConn, I've been doing this uh, investments for an investment side actually for about 15 years now. Um, so I'm looking forward to being on the board and seeing how I can help out in any way. Thank you very much. So uh, agenda item number one, uh, uh, approval of the minutes of the regular joint meeting on December 14th, 2021. Move approval. Second. Any changes, amendments, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Um, Your Honor, can we also just get yep. a, um, an idea of everyone who's here? Because oh, I know yeah. there's some people in the audience as well, and there may Very be good. people we'll do, that we can't see online. We'll do full so. introductions then. I was trying to speed it along. Sorry about that. Go ahead, John, you start. John Smith, Board of Finance. Recording in progress. We know Mark. Oh. Mark Whitford, Board of Finance. Ryan Burns, Board of Finance. Orlando Kelfi, Board of Finance. Jolene Lusitani, City Councilor, District 1. Cheryl Tebow, City Council, District 3. Jeff Caggiano, Mayor. Andrew Howe, District 3, City Councilor. <laughs> Sebastian Paniotto, City Council. Sue Tyler, City Council, District 2. Jacqueline Olson, City Council, District 2. Anybody on Zoom? Nope. I don't think so. Got full compliment that's, here. That's, <laughs> so. that's a good thing to see yeah. in here. All right, Therese, go ahead, take over then. Okay, approval of minutes of the regular joint meeting on December 14th, 2020. We, are, we already covered that one. We'll go to two. Go to I consent calendar. There are uh, six items, Your Honor. Do you want to read them or no? From red. Uh, not unless somebody wants unless to. Unless somebody wants to pull one off. Pull? Yeah. None? So I'll entertain a motion to move it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Number three. To make an additional appropriation of $187,982 within the school lunch fund funded by fed federal reimbursement. Move approval. Second. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Four is to transfer $244,575 from the general fund contingency account to the fire department operating budget for the hiring initiative. Move, Move approval. Second. Cheryl got the first. And John, uh, any comments on this one? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Number five. To make an additional appropriation of $1,400,000 within the Capital Projects Fund. Motion to approve. We have a second? Second. Andrew? Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm not paying attention either. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to withdraw number five. A motion to withdraw. I'll move it. Second. I don't think we need any discussion on this. We just did this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Good. Um, that one carries. And so now we're on six. Eight. 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 Lost track. They're all together. Okay. Yeah, they were linked. So number eight. ARP task force to make an additional appropriation of $5,000 within the coronavirus relief fund. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And number nine. 
monthly revenue and expense report uh, update by Diane. Gee, if I keep this really brief, you'll be back on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will keep it brief. Um, as you can see in the report, they're actually, um, our tax revenues did really well. We actually got a receipt in on an escrow account um, of 7.4 million early, which is good. Get it in the bank earlier than, than rather than later. Usually those come in the end of January, not the middle of December. Um, our prior tax revenues are doing very well. We're at 1.2 million, so we're at 93.2% of the budget. So we still have six months to go. So um, that's looking positive as well. And as I did report last month, the motor vehicle supplement bills were going to be a little bit higher uh, than they were last year. And uh, we had budgeted 1.5 million. Um, the bills were 2.7, but when you factor in a, uh, an allowance for account doubtful accounts and what's not going to be collected and uh, any adjustments and credits that have to happen, uh, that, that revenue could come in um, $2.1 million over um, exceed the budget at 2.1 million versus the 1.5. So I think that's a real good trend to have right now going into uh, the last half of the fiscal year. Um, building permits and conveyance taxes, same story. We're at 83.3% for building and 125 for conveyance. So we're well over 100% there um, on the conveyance with six months to go. Um, on the expenditure side, just want to point out um, everything, nothing to be concerned with at this point. Um, I do want to just point out contingency right now after this last uh, appropriation you did for the firing, fire uh, initiative is uh, $619,000. So that has to get us through the rest of the year. I, I anticipate it will. Uh, we normally don't do uh, large transfers like that. So, um, I mean, it's all a good thing, but um, I think we, we should be fine through the end of the fiscal year with the 600000 that's left. Um, we did have started the budget process. My department has already met with a few departments. Um, everybody has been pretty uh, responsible with trying to come in at uh, what the guidelines were. Um, there are a couple anomalies here and there with things that can't be helped. Um, but for the most part, um, everything looks good and we will be scheduling the Board of Finance meetings uh, shortly uh, with all the departments. Um, I think Jody probably has that on the next, calendar, next agenda to discuss and set that schedule. Um, the ARPA task force has been meeting regularly. Um, so far appropriated is only $222,000. So that is all that will need to be reported. We do have a report deadline for January 31st of what was spent through December. So this report should be relatively easy. Um, the deadline for all of the applications is January 31st. To date, there's only, uh, the mayor might speak to this later, only 2.9 million that has been applied for. Um, but we do anticipate there are a lot of city projects that still have to go in. Um, as we've been going through the budget process and going through the budgets in my office, there are some projects that we've identified that might be ARPA eligible. So we're asking department heads, if they are, to put them in the portal so that they could be reviews, reviewed by the task force. Um, that being said, the mayor mentioned earlier in the previous meeting that the Treasury did come out with final guidelines. Um, very pleased with some of it. Very broad um, that they're allowing up to $10 million in revenue loss um, to be used for any general purposes um, for the city. And it at, relieves a lot of administrative burden. Um, it definitely was a very positive um, regulation that they de uh, redefined. Uh, so that definitely gives a lot of flexibility going forward. And again, all those projects will still need to go through the ARPA task force at that point. Um, any questions on that? But I thought that was something that I just wanted to report on here. The other thing that they did make mm -hmm. more broad was they did include cybersecurity in the uh, in the broadband piece, which I thought was good because I know that's something that we've been talking about here as well. So that's uh, that's positive. Um, any questions on the ARPA guidelines or okay? Uh, the other thing I do want to mention two things: the audit. Um, we've been in contact with the audit. They, we have been done on our end uh, since probably mid, early December. We are having delays on their end. We did file an extension through January 31st, which was approved by the state and GFOA. 
Um, in conversations with the auditors just yesterday, we will need to file for another extension through February. Um, and it's not anything on our part. It's, I just think with COVID, um, they've had a lot of staff out. Um, they also merged with another firm earlier last uh, calendar year and a lot of their testing and their requirements that they had to get brought up to speed on have changed. So I noticed on my end, which will probably make you all happy, they are doing a lot more testing than they ever had in the past. So um, they've done a lot more work. <laughs> so not only did they have to get caught up and learn the new way, but they had to teach their staff and they've had limited staff because of, um, because of COVID. So we understand, but we're trying to really push to get them to get it to us earlier rather than later in February. And uh, we have started, again, started the bond issue process, putting that together. I'm looking right now, I'm pushing that off because there were a couple of unknowns, one of them being the 1.4 million that we just tabled um, to March. So we're looking at an issue date in March for the bond issue. Any other questions? I think I covered everything I wanted to. Anybody in the audience? Any questions? No? Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Diane. Thank Appreciate it. Any other business proper to come before us? No, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We did get much closer. Uh, let's do, Therese, can we do 10 after? I know we gotta go run and do something quick. So we'll start our city council meeting at 7.10. Okay, so 7.12, we're gonna call uh, the city council meeting for Thursday, Tuesday, excuse me, January 11th, 2022 to order, and we'll start off with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, opening ceremonies. We, I actually had something planned. We didn't quite get it ready. So all I'll tell you is that our wall back there might be filled for one month before we move. And uh, we'll wait for next month for that. Uh, agenda item 1A, moment of reflection. I do want to take a second, um, as many of you have, have probably heard. Unfortunately, we had a fatal fire here in uh, Bristol recently and just wanted to take a moment of silence for that family. Uh, unfortunately, a disabled uh, woman uh, perished. We had a tremendous response from our fire department. Uh, they put a lot of effort to help the individual and it's a very tragic event. So I just want to take a moment of silence for them. Thank you. Therese, we'll move on to two. Certainly, approval of minutes of the regular city council meeting on December 14th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Any comments, changes, amendments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Number three, public participation. I know you ran out to get that. Did we have any? Nobody has signed up for public participation here locally. Is there anybody on Zoom that would like to speak under public participation? Going once. All right. Uh, number four, we'll do announcements. And uh, we can introduce ourselves as you go along as well, too, because I didn't do that earlier. But uh, we'll start with you, Sebastian, Council District 1. Sure. I'd, um, I just want to. Um give kudos and, and say great job to CERT and all, all of our emergency services, um, some of the guys that are here tonight in regards to the, um, the COVID test distribution. I know that was hard for everyone as far as the schedule goes, having them be delayed, having a staggered amount given to us and, and a limited supply. So we had a lot of uh, volunteers also and a lot of volunteer groups help us out. Um, I commend the residents for their patience also. It was not an easy process but everything went smoothly. So um, I just want to give uh, kudos to all those involved. Thank you. Go ahead, Jolene. Go ahead, Jolene. Um, I disagree with Sebastian. Um, it's kind of hard getting everybody together uh, for doing something like this. So it was great to see everybody out there, all the teams working together to get all these tests out. So I do want to thank everybody for that as well. 
Thank you, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl Tebow, District 3. Kudo, um, I'm just going to go ditto there. But I do have a couple other announcements, and this one's very important. The um, State of Connecticut will be visiting the next Public Works meeting on Thursday the 20th to present the latest update on the West End project. And it hasn't been updated for a little bit, so this is real key. Now, um, we did ask um, that this be moved to be the first agenda item because the West End Association also meets on that night. So it will be here in chambers and available on Zoom. So um, we're all affected by this, and so I hope you'll make time to attend. Um, two other announcements. I had a few people as they came through the line ask about food distribution because as we know that kind of stopped. But there are three mobile pickup sites available here in Bristol. Now if you need to find this, you could go to the Food Share website and put in what town you're looking for and it will give you a list of dates. Um, the next couple coming up is um, Bristol Housing Authority at Cambridge Park on January 25th at 1015. These only last 30 minutes. There will be one at Bristol Housing Authority, the Gaylord um, Street location on January 17th at 9.15. And on um, this week at 9 o'clock at Grace Baptist Church at 736 King Street. And these are drive-in food distributions for those. And one other quick announcement. I know you're all excited that it's almost tax time. And the IRS VITA program, which is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, will again be offering free tax preparation services to seniors and people who generally make less than 57000 per year. This free service um, is offered in conjunction with HRA and the United Way and is staffed by volunteers. They haven't um, put out the phone numbers, but if you follow, and I will put it on my page, I'll have the mayor um, provide it to them so they can. It's a great service. The IRS is predicting this is going to be a very difficult year because of all the different funding and the tax credits. So if you need help and you fall into those, please keep your eyes open to, to avail yourself to this free service. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Andrew, any announcements? Not for me, Your Honor. Susan Tyler, any announcements? I concur with um, Sebastian and Jolene. Uh, I was honored to work at both of the distribution um, uh, distributions that we did, uh, especially the second one I thought was absolutely amazing. Uh, we not only were some of our administration present, but the previous administration was there. We had volunteers from the Bristol Republican Town Committee and the Bristol Democratic Town Committee. It was, in my mind, one of the most awesome things that I have participated in recently, just with um, all people coming together and working together. All of the citizens who came through, uh, it, was, it was just heartwarming, even though it was really cold and it took two hours for my feet to thaw. It was heartwarming, the gratitude that we got from our citizens. Um, it was a very special thing. And on the note of it being really cold out today um, and this week, uh, 211 is the number that you would call if there is anyone who is looking for shelter. Um, we do run, St. Vincent de Paul does um, assist with other organizations and they do run an overflow shelter during the cold weather months and they are there and available. Um, for someone wanting to get into a shelter or getting into overflow, all they have to do is call 211. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on Monday, January 3rd, the state had failed to address the needs for, of the people with disabilities in broadly promising that COVID kits and the N95 mask would be first come, first served. So upon hearing this, I reached out to the mayor and I also asked Dan McCary, who chairs the Persons for Disabilities, to reach out to the mayor. And as a result, Harley Graham coordinated distribution and Dan was able to deliver supplies to both Bristol ARC and Central Connecticut ARC. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jackie. I'm going to come back to Andrew for one other announcement. Yeah, I forgot to mention that tomorrow night at 6 p.m., Councilman Tebow and I will be having a meet and greet question and answer session um, at Manross Library. Um, we are following protocol. Masks are required if you are not inoculated. Um, and we hope you see you tomorrow night at 6. And I have a couple of announcements. I just actually want to formally thank the Bristol Burlington, Burlington Health Department, the Police Department, the Fire Department, CERT. We had bipartisan support from both the Democratic Town Committee and the Republican Town Committee to go ahead and distribute those kits. Uh, another little quick detail, but I don't think, uh, with the exception of the people who came very early and sat there for a couple hours, that anybody waited for longer than 15 minutes to get through that line. It was cold. It was a great team effort, and I hope to see a lot of that in the future. <clears throat> Number two, I have to do this, Dean, sorry, but it's ARPA, it's the third time you're hearing it. ARPA applications are due by January 31st. If you have any questions, you can go to our C City All Heart website, uh, our on the regular website as well for the City of Bristol. Uh, please reach out to your family, friends, neighbors, anybody that would be interested in these funds and get your application in by the 31st. Uh, last thing, I do want to announce that we had a very productive, I thought, workshop that was put together for the economic and community development uh, uh, team and department uh, for the city council. Uh, Mike Gorman, Goman for Goman and York came uh, on his own volition to give us a presentation on Saturday evening. I will actually be posting the question answer session to that program on the mayor's webpage. Uh, very informative. We are in a period where uh, we hope to see a lot of growth downtown and there still are some pieces to fill. So I thought it was an opportunity to, you know, beef up our education and I, I thought he was tremendous and I also want to just publicly thank him and uh, Corporate Council uh, um, for helping us. Uh, Tom Conlin uh, had a good connection with him so I really appreciate uh, pulling that off. So it's the only announcement I had. Did we forget any others? We're good. I think we can go to number five, the consent calendar. And there are four items, Your Honor. Yep. So it's uh, the new hire report for December, the contract for architectural services relative to roof replacement at Edgewood School, um, the Board of Public Works recommendation regarding the sidewalk deferral at s lot 64 Emmett Street, and the award of contract for engineering services relative to removal and replacement of underground fuel storage tanks at Chippens Hill Middle School. Does anybody wish to pull anything off the consent calendar? No, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Cheryl gets a second, I think. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Number six, reports and committee reports. Uh, Jackie, uh, oh, actually, sorry, 6A, real estate is first, which I think is Susan, right? Okay. We're looking for an approval for the city to enter into exclusive right to sell listing contract with bottom line realty to sell lot number 12 on Waterbury Road. I hereby move that the city of Bristol enter into a three month exclusive right to sell listing contract with bottom line realty to sell lot number 12 Waterbury Road. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to repair, prepare and or re review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectu effectuate the same. Second. Second from Cheryl. Any discussion on this? Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Oh, wait, Aye. wait a second, Aye. Andrew. You I'm just go. glad to hear that it's finally moving this Waterbury Road, this lot has been on for a very long time when I was dealing with planning, it would come up. So I'm very glad to see that there's a, a contract put on this property now. So thank you, Sue, and the rest of the Not community. a contract at this point, no. but it's out, out for sale. Out for sale, sorry. Yep, very good, so we'll do that again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, 6B, which is from Ordinance Committee, which stays with Susan, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Is this the way you're doing this? 
Okay, so this is for to set a public hearing and introduce amendments to the Bristol Code of Ordinances regarding Section 16-3 tobacco products prohibited in the city parks and recreational properties. In accordance with Section 21F of the Charter of the City of Bristol, the following amendments to the Code of Ordinances are hereby introduced. I hereby move that the time and place of Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 at 5 p.m. in the first floor meeting room of City Hall, 111 North Main Street, Bristol, Connecticut, be set for the holding of a public hearing thereon by the Ordinance Committee and that the City Clerk publish notice of said public hearing and the proposed amendments to the Code of Ordinances as required by City Charter. Move to approve. Second. Discussion on this one, and I'd like to maybe solicit a little discussion on this one uh, for those on the ordinance committee. Sherry, you must start. Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, you know, uh, with the uh, uh, recent change in state uh, law that allowed the use of recreational marijuana, um, you know, we had to reevaluate, do we want people partaking in these products in our public parks? Currently, tobacco and tobacco-type products are banned. Um, so in order to prepare, uh, we also um, solicited the feedback and input of our parks director, um, Dr. Medeiros, who was not only using his knowledge, but reached out to several other um, local recreation departments throughout the state. They have their association um, in which they were all talking about this and we were able to benefit from that information. Um, we used the advice of Corporation Council in how we want to approach this as well um, in just reviewing the entire state law and came to the conclusion with this that we wanted to bring this forward for the public hearing. Anybody have anything else to add? I know she's gonna have a second part to this motion, I believe, but um, comments? Uh, yep, and uh, I would like to introduce a motion to waive the reading, too. Uh, although we have to vote on this one first, I think. Rules of order. Let's waive the reading first. All right, so I will entertain a motion to waive the reading. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. So now we go back to the motion that we were on. Um, my only comment as well, too, is there was great discussion about that at the Ordinance Committee. I know that we talked about this with schools. I see a Board of Ed member out there as well, too, and they have their own um, policies and procedures on this. So uh, good job on this. All those in favor? Wait, did oh. Andrew have a question? No, well, I thought he no, oh, I, I did, but I. Okay. You're good? I'm good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, I think we're done with that one. We didn't miss anything, did we? Nope. nope. 6C, ordinance again. Okay, this is to set a public hearing and introduce amendments to the Bristol Code of Ordinances, section 16.7, pertaining to definitions for products prohibited in city parks. In accordance with section 21F of the Charter of the City of Bristol, the following amendments to the Code of Ordinances are hereby introduced. I hereby move at the time and place of Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, at 5.10 p.m. in the first floor meeting room, City Hall, 111 North Main Street, Bristol, Connecticut, be set for the holding of a public hearing thereon by the Ordinance Committee, and that the City Clerk publish said of notice of said public hearing and the proposed amendments to the Code of Ordinances as required by City Charter. Second. Good. We, I also introduce a motion to waive the reading of the resolution. So or moves. ask somebody to. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Discussion? I'll just add, this just adds definitions to what cannabis is, what is a cannabis product, and tobacco products. And so it just gives some depth behind that. Very good, yeah, nothing. Uh, on this one, just to maybe another highlight, and I'm going to ask the uh, council as well. 
Uh, we, we've seen public hearings in the past not get their uh, due. I think that's up to all of us to make sure that the public is aware of this. We're going to get this out on social media and make sure that we have uh, people show up at the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, next agenda item. Good. Oh, um, sorry. Through the chair, I would like to bring um, the salary committee um, to the table for a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Go ahead, um, Cheryl. Thank you. Um, I have a motion um, that we have prepared. This comes from our uh, previous um, salary meeting. Um, so through the chair, I make a motion to approve a wage increase to $18 an hour for the deputy registrars of voters retroactive to November 1, 2021, and to refer to the Board of Finance for informational purposes. Move to approve. Second. Yep, I think we might already have that. All right, discussion on this, and Cheryl, give us a little background, but um, this is just for the audience, something that we've worked on, and we actually tabled this earlier on, and so it's an ongoing business. Right, um, basically, um, this is to change the salary for our two deputy registrars from $13 an hour to $18 per hour. Now, that, that may seem like a lot uh, of a jump, but there had been no significant raises um, prior to this. And what really led to this is in the last, and I, I wish I written, wrote the date down, but a lot of our poll workers recently had increases in their salaries. Um, and this brought these two individuals more in line with the hourly rate that those workers also um, earned. These positions uh, have to be certified uh, they put a lot of training in, and to lose these people um, would cost the city far more in training dollars to bring in new staff. Overall, when we looked at the number of hours they put in over the year, we're really talking a budget impact of $1,500. So while the jump per hourly rate seems huge, it is not a big impact, and the two people in the office um, have brought a great resource to the city and have put in above and beyond. Um, and this brings them more in line, as I mentioned, with the poll workers. And we felt it, it made sense when we looked at, um, you know, and, and scheduled it out um, and talked to both our registrars. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I think we have a couple other unfinished items. Under committees. Oh, uh, huh? Yep, sorry, just for the record. Yeah. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, I am abstaining from that vote. Thank you, Andrew. Go ahead, Cheryl. Uh, Susan, we just left Cheryl. Okay, I have another motion um, for the Real Estate Committee. Um, I hereby move that the City of Bristol seek requests for proposals for the disposition of property owned by the City known as 43 East Main Street on Map 41 of the Bristol Assessor's Office and that the purchasing agent be authorized to request proposals and that he send out a press release in addition to the legal notices and update the City website. I further move that this matter be referred to Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Do I have a second? Second. I'll, I'll start with a little discussion on this is uh, just to mention that this is a property I believe that went out uh, before, did not move. Uh, this is a, a brownfield property. We have somebody that is potentially interested in this property, so we figured we'd bring it back up, and uh, it is a city-owned property that could go to valuable use in the future. If um, anybody has any other questions, I think high level, that's all I have for you, but we can answer any questions or if there's any other comments. I don't have a question, Your Honor, through the chair. Uh, just that we, most of us drive by that lot every single day, or not every day, but it's really been it's got a useful uh, a purpose for it. So I'm really glad to see this coming up and hopefully we can get something taken care of with that lot. Great. Any other comments, questions? 
It has a river view. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a river view. Put a bench for you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I think we have at least one more. We probably have a couple. A lot of unfinished business here from our last meeting, so <coughs> bear with us. No, we're still under committees. Oh, you're under committees still. From uh, the police board, um, our police department is applying for the 2022 JAG Local VCP Grant Program. Uh, VCP stands for Violent Crime Prevention. This grant um, is through the State of um, Connecticut Office of Policy and Management, and it provides grants to assist local police departments with violent crime prevention and public safety improvements. Bristol has been selected to receive up to $31,400 under this one-time grant. Um, some of the purpose areas, it can be used to reduce and prevent violent crime and gun violence, reduce and prevent gang group violence, support and expand community policing strategies, improve police response to domestic violence and sex assault crime. And it can also be used towards improving police responses to mentally ill offenders. Um, I make a motion to approve the submission of the 2022 JAG Local Violent Crime Prevention Grant for up to $31,400 and to authorize the Chief of Police, Acting Chief, Deputy Chief, Mayor, or Acting Mayor to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the said grant. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this one? I, th I think you were pretty, you covered that well, but any questions, comments? This is a, a, a late coming grant that we wanna make sure we take advantage of. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I know, uh, Sebastian, you may have a, another one. I do well, have right? um, something in regards to um, the review of um, parking garage construction. Um, proposals so I have a motion to um, to award contract 2p 22-032b engineering services relative to design of structured parking facility to Desmond Inc in the amount of two hundred sixteen thousand dollars and to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to affect said contract second any comments questions on this one all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And then I thought there was one other floating out there. Does anybody have one? Another one about, or is that under unfinished business? But the Well, uh, actually under committee reports, I have one more for the chair. Go ahead. I just wanted to give a quick update um, as far as the police department goes. Um, they're a little slow this month. Uh, they participated and in both of our COVID test kit distributions, um, phenomenal. Uh, whether, whether it be all the officers that helped out checking out IDs, Chief Gould who got his steps in on both occasions, um, and our wonderful CERT team, they were just absolutely phenomenal. Also, um, our police department did actually sponsor the uh, CPA, uh, Chief, Connecticut Chiefs of Police Association's annual mini expo, and that was held at the Doubletree. I had mentioned that at the last city council meeting, and it was actually held. Um, great success. It was an absolutely phenomenal event. My understanding is that some other chiefs are looking to see if they can get it in their town. We're going to do what we have to do to keep the business here in Bristol. Um, also, I want to recognize and welcome um, our newest officer who. Uh, Graduated from the, the police academy in December 23rd. I do not have his name. Um, I didn't see it on my phone. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's recognize the officer. Um, and we also, no. Maybe <laughs> um, and we also have, um, on January 19th, uh, two of our newest police hires will be sworn in and will start the police academy shortly thereafter. Thank you. Any other Hold on. committee reports? Can, can the chief yeah, add the I was, names? I was going to look on, it up. Chief. It is on the mayor's page, too, and I just want to mispronounce it. Go ahead, Chief Gould. Chief Officer Alonzo Redondo, and uh, we are going to be swearing in the 
Karen Yin, Joshua Nelson, and uh, John Duncan on the, uh, on the 19th. For those, uh, it's, it's for, for those on Zoom, uh, <laughs> Officer uh, Alonzo Redondo is our newest, and we'll be doing a new officer pretty soon, so, because you might not have heard Chief Gould. Any other committee reports or updates for? Uh, I, Your Honor, I have one for the Office of Early Childhood Development announced that on December 31st, they will continue to support the safety net for state funded programs with the 25% operating expenses. The programs, parents and elected officials in the community rallied for this to occur. To support the school readiness and CDC programs, not only in Bristol, but in the state of Connecticut. We're grateful for the assistance that will benefit not only our programs, but the children and families that it serves. There's been an uptick in COVID cases in early childhood settings. It's understood that children in the early childhood are too young to be vaccinated, and those under two cannot wear masks. The SR programs had cases of breakthrough infection with teachers that are fully vaccinated and wear masks. We acknowledge their work that they're doing and thank them for their help in the community. Uh, finally, last week, the United Way sponsored a workshop, Learning Speech and Language in Classrooms with COVID Measures. It was presented by the Connecticut Ears. Uh, the presenters were doctors of audiology and speech pathology, Diane Gonzalez and Catherine Sullivan. This was recorded and will be available for you guys to view if you're interested. Um, what came out is that the youngest learners are suffering significant speech language delays because of the mitigation strategies that they're trying to use in young children's classrooms, especially in the infant and the toddler in pre-K where language development is essential. Um, one of the suggestions made from the presentation was a portable mini voice amplifier for teachers to wear with their masks. It'll amplify their voice and enunciate the sounds and words to present voice fatigue for teachers. Uh, the transition of kindergarten committee is exploring the remedy for teachers to see how many would be interested in obtaining a mini voice amplifier and it's $35.99 per amp amplifier can be paid for. That's it for the early childhood development. Um, the Parks Commission, they survived their first storm. Crew was out there cleaning up the boulevard, Page Park, Rockwell Parks, a lot of their sidewalks. Um, they did a really good job. We went through there as they were, we went and brought my kids sledding. Um, so they did an amazing job. Um, we had the Arch and Culture Commission has created a advisory subcommittee for the tackle. They have the cultural district designation project coming up where they're vetted out by the mayor and approval of the commission. Um, they are, we are one of two cities in the state that have been tapped to have a Martin Luther King Jr. Um, mural done. And at the same time, we are also, um, we are up for a district, an arts district that you'll see coming through with the commission. Um, you'll see more of that coming up in the next month, maybe two months, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Dr. Medeiros and his crew can do. That's Thank it. you, Andrew. Jolene, I'll go to you next. I saw you put your microphone on. Sure. Um, for the Board of Education, um, BAMS had their first lottery, and they accepted 141 students and plan to start the second lottery very soon. Um, the BAMS building project received two large donations for, from QA and M Architecture for 25,000, and another one from Diamato Downs uh, for 25,000, which was very generous. Um, for the Board of Education, they, the majority voted to move a regulation to a policy. And the regulation was not allowing students to wear hats or have their hoods up if they wore hood, hoodies. Um, they moved that regulation to a policy um, because with regulations, the administration has the right to fully implement it if they want. And if they change it to a policy, it's, a, it's an indefinite. Um, Last month, I stated that we were trying to work on a program to help uh, monitor the ongoing issue regarding the behavioral issues on the school buses with the kids. Uh, we are looking into getting volunteers, such as parents, grandparents, to be on the bus and help the bus drivers monitor the children so that it relieves the stress and the bus drivers can do their job safely. 
Right now we're at a standstill with that because of the COVID issues that are going on in the school. Um, the good side of that is that the complaints have seemed to lessen with the bus drivers. Uh, regardless, as soon as we get a green light, we'll be uh, trying to get this program up and running. For the Northeast Building Committee, we have our first full meeting this week. Prior to the meeting, we had to go through 14 possible firms for the project and narrow it down to four. Um, after carefully reviewing all of them, the four picked were Q, A, and M, Perkins Eastman, Tecton, and Fryer. Uh, three of them have already done work in Bristol, and um, Tecton has not. Uh, we have a meeting on the 19th to interview these firms and make a final decision. For the Youth Commission, they had a successful holiday gift giving program this year, serving over 475 kids, which is more than they ever had in the history of the program. Um, what else? Oh, also the Youth Commission will be starting their 2022 20, Recognition Awards, which recognizes outstanding youth volunteering in the community. The application for the nomination begins in early February and winners will be chosen in April and then a ceremony will be held in May. I also want to say congratulations to Tommy's Place and Market that opened up on Stafford Avenue. Um, I drive by, they look busy and they're getting great reviews. So I want to say congratulations to them as well. That's it. Thank you. Sebastian, you have any committee updates? Or? Uh, briefly, I do. Um the Library Board of Directors last met on Monday, January 3rd, and I think it's important for us as a council and really for everyone in the room to say thank you to Deb Prozo and um, to Scott Stain for accommodating a lot of the boards and commissions that we have meeting here in terms of uh, the City Hall renovation and hosting a lot of us and also finding a balance between hosting us and being able to accommodate public meetings and, and um, having those, uh, putting that puzzle together in terms of the schedule. So. I want to say thank you to them. Um, I know that wasn't an easy task. Otherwise, I am meeting with, with Deb and Scott um, in the next couple of weeks to discuss some uh, policy issues. They do have, uh, the library does have a utility vehicle that's getting up in age and in mileage. Um, so they are trying to get every last mile they can out of it. Uh, I think ARPA funds might be an option for them. Um, they did uh, revise their options that they were looking at initially uh, down in price. So that's uh, something that they're continuing to look into as of now. Um, on the Diversity Council, I know you're aware of this, uh, Mr. Mayor. We did have uh, Glenn Chalder with Planometrics give a presentation um, on housing affordability. And uh, that's in, in uh, regards to uh, the, the state uh, guidance for housing affordability. Um, and Bristol does meet um, the state guidance for percentage of affordable housing stock at above 10%, Bristol is at 14.79% uh, affordable housing stock. And um, so he will be working with planning as far as getting that plan together, which the state, I guess, um, mandates that cities uh, collect that information and, and have a plan together. The challenge that comes with Bristol is connecting residents to the housing as far as price points go and um, communication guidance, that's kind of the issue with, with some of the Bristol residents that we're, we're trying to work with. So the Diversity Council is willing to help in that regard and we'll uh, make it a priority when that plan comes out. That plan is due in June of this year. Thank you. I think we're all done with committee reports, right? Very good. We'll move on to agenda item number seven, unfinished business. Any unfinished business? I don't think so. Uh, number eight, new business. Nope. Number nine, resignations. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, put the to file the resignations and send a letter of thanks to those that are resigning. There are three resignations. Oh, go ahead. I only had two listed um, here. Go Lindsay, ahead. Lindsay Vigue from the Arts and Culture Commission, and that's as of February fifth of twenty twenty two. Bob Callett from the Board of Park Commissioners and Patricia Bedoin from the Bristol Parking Authority. So I'll entertain a motion. To so I'll move. Accept and send them, thank you. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Okay. Got it, thank you. 
Um, all righty. We're going to move on to uh, number 10 appointments, which I just got a note on. This, this could get a little bit uh, cumbersome, but uh, we're going to do the best we could. Let's start with our city council uh, assignments uh, due to lots of scheduling changes and us getting our feet wet. We are, uh, I'd like to have a motion to move Sebastian Paniato to ECD. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, because he came off of energy, uh, the mayor's appointment uh, as a liaison on energy will move Jackie. Olson, but that's a mayor's appointment. And then I skipped that one. No, because we're not ready for that one. Uh, and then we have um, a city energy commission, uh, a motion to reappoint John Ferraro to a three year term to expire on 125. So can I have a motion? So moved. Can I have a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have two for the Board of Fire Commissioners to reappoint Sean Moore to a three-year term, uh, expires 125, to reappoint Dana Jandro to a three-year term, expires 125. We can do these together. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Under Freedom of Information Advisory Board to reappoint Edward Ducko, three-year term, expires 125. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, down at uh, Inland Wetlands, this is a mayor's appointment. Uh, I am going to appoint James Ritchie to replace as an alternate member to an unexpired term of 124 to the Inland Wetlands Commission. So we don't need a vote on that one, correct, Therese? Good. Uh, Board of Library Directors. We actually have four here. Um, first, and we can do these together, right, Therese? Yes. Good. Um, we are going to replace and use Barbara O'Neill to replace the resigned position on 11 21 to an unexpired term of 125. We are going to reappoint Pina Salvatore to a three year term. Expires 125. We're going to reappoint Lucia Stewart Roman to a three year term. Expires 125. And we're going to reappoint Elizabeth Kanchowski to a three year term. Expires 125. So moved. I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, next one. We got a few more here. Board of Park Commissioners, um, Rob Lawson to uh, take over a term uh, due to an, a resignation, uh, unexpired term to 12-22, Rob Lawson. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then I have two more, let me find them on another page. Uh, purchasing agent to reappoint Roger Russo to a four-year term expires 126. So, so moved. moved. <laughs> Second. He's still hanging in here. He's been waiting all, all night for that one. All those in favor? Oh, I want Aye. discussion. Aye. Wait, oh. wait, no. yeah. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And I think the last one on my list, but Therese will check me on that one. I have a youth commission uh, to replace a, a under 21 aged member to an unexpired term of three years to 1224, um, John Lukasevich. So, so moved. moved. Yep. So, so moved. I did I say something? No, uh, I was 1224, I'm thinking. December. Okay. December <laughs> 12, you. yeah, Very December 12, 24, yep, so we move that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> back there. Motion carries. Let me just look real quickly to see if I missed any of these. I don't think so. I think we're good. Did you see any I missed, Therese? No. no? All right, thank you. Number 11. Oops. 
Uh, I'll talk to you after. That's the note that I got. So I'll, I'll talk to you after. Sorry, Dave. Um, I know you were sitting here waiting, but we'll talk to you after, I promise. Number 11, um, a resolution regarding the Senior Tax Relief Pilot Program. I don't know if this was uh, given to somebody in particular. If not. I can read it if you'd like. Can we waive the, the reading of the resolution on this one? Uh, yes, it's actually part of the oh, motion. So it's the right. resolution regarding the senior tax relief and to waive the reading of the resolution, but to include it as part of the minutes. Thank you, Therese. So uh, moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and Anybody opposed? Can we get a roll call vote? Oh, roll call for this. That's right. So we'll start on our left this time. If Or, or you go ahead and do it, <laughs> Therese. How about that? You want to do? Just start. Roll call. All right. Yes. Sebastian. Yes. 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 Susan? Oh, you did vote yes? Yeah. Sorry, roll call. And I should have been last. I uh, apologize. Chair votes yes. Through the chair? <coughs> yes. Um, you know, I just wanted to add that um, I reached out to Patty, who is the executive director at the Senior Center, because one of the questions I had is, um, with COVID still active, um, are there opportunities for seniors maybe to do some at-home work or things like this? And she had responded um, and very graciously and said that, you know, in part of this, they looked at reducing some of the hours because of the COVID. But for those out there who want to take advantage of this, she also has an Excel spreadsheet that lists places and phone numbers and contacts of where seniors could go so that they can arrange to get some volunteer hours. So, you know, they just don't have to do it on their own and find these locations. And I think I just wanted to share that because that's so important for people to know there's a resource. So they could find Patty at the Senior Center. She loves everybody senior, so you're in great hands. She and her staff, and they can get you that list. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Number 12. Number 12 is to establish the ESSER ARP Projects Committee to oversee the addition of air conditioning at the Chippens Hill Middle School at 551 Peacedale Street and Hubble Elementary School at 90 West Washington Street for a project cost of $8,695,000. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. All right, number 13. Oh, to approve the creation of a Charter Revision Commission, appoint the members and make recommendations. So, so there's a motion here. So moved. No, this no, one, no, this no, one we have to read. This one. I can read oh. it if yep. you'd like. Uh, you resolution. Okay. Be it hereby resolved that pursuant to authority contained in Section 7-187 through 7-190 of the Connecticut General Statutes, mm -hmm. the City Council of the City of Bristol hereby creates a Charter Revision Commission to consist of seven electors to be nominated by the mayor and confirmed by the city council, provided that no more than one third of whom may hold any other public office in the city and not more than a bare majority of whom shall be members of any one political party. Said commission is hereby directed to make its draft report to the appointing authority on or before June 24, 2022. 2022. Do I have a second? Second. second. A little discussion on this. So um, city uh, council, we're, we're coming a little bit late to this, but we're going to move after this for two other uh, additions to actually appoint a charter revision committee and talk about those. But this is something that we have to do by resolution. Uh, I know we're all in agreement with that. But this uh, uh, will be a roll call vote as well for here, or should we do all of them together? Um, actually, for the appointments, you don't need a, a roll call vote. That's fine. Okay. Um, so really, it would just be if you want to do a roll call vote for the, for the, the motion resolution to create, to create and then the we'll commission. Move. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with a roll call vote. Sebastian? Yes. 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 And chair votes yes. So we have a charter revision committee. The seven members uh, that we would like to choose for the charter revision committee would be John Fitzgerald, Dante Tagriello, Daniel Macari, Melanie McKinley, Calvin Brown, Michelle Ann Rolfe, and Richard Carter. So 
principal I'll entertain a motion to approve those seven motion members. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on this? Uh, only comment I'll make is uh, it is interesting that we will have uh, a nice split of Democrats and Republicans and actually more Democrats on it. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. So now let's move on to uh, the city council has the ability for the Charter, charter Revision Committee to put forth uh, items that we would like the Charter Revision Committee to entertain. The Charter Revision Committee um, will entertain those, anything that comes before them from the public, and will go through the entire charter and can come up with items on their own. So um, the two that we've discussed as a city council are to consider a four-year term for the office of mayor. Uh, this is something that has been looked at in many years past, and uh, I would like to, look that, uh, like to have them look at that again. And the other item is to consider to expand or amend our city council to consider minority representation within the city council. So those are the two that I have. Anybody have anything else to add? I don't think we did. Uh, I do. Oh. Uh, redistricting. So redistricting is actually one that we did talk about a little bit, but um, is actually an ordinance. Okay. There may be a mention in the ordinance to charter, if I'm not mistaken, to a map, but that might be something that could be fixed. Um, I, I don't know if it's something that we formally, yeah, that's going to be an ordinance. So we don't need to formally do that, but they will look at that in the charter revision committee. Okay. Good. So I'll entertain a motion if I didn't already. To so moved. Those. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. We're good there. The next, next item, 14. To amend contract 2P2131B, construction manager at risk for renovations at Bristol City Hall with D'Amato and Downs, a joint venture. And it says for $1,558,355, but the purchasing agent has asked that that be changed to not exceeding that amount and authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute. Move approval. Second. Any discussion on this? It's just a slight change number here. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. We are on to 15. To approve a submission by the Parks Department for planning assistance to na Natural Resources Conservation Service Watershed Program for potential Public Law 566 project to improve Connecticut Dam Number 1702, the Page Park Pond Dam. And there isn't a motion to read on this one, is there? If it was, it wasn't attached. Um, so yeah, so this is all entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any comments, questions? Josh is out there. Oh, we're good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Number 17, uh, well actually, sorry, 16. Any other business to come before the meeting, before the council? I don't think so. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move it. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.